So I went to a Front Bottoms concert two days ago and I broke my glasses. So I have my old ones and I can't see anything. So it's currently 2.03 and I can't sleep because I never sleep. Yeah, today's been a really shitty day. I slept an hour, hardly. Yeah, it's just a really bad mental day. And I'm like, hey, why not make a YouTube video? Because I'm really fucking sad, so let's... Let's make a YouTube video. I want to make a video about sad music because all day I have been in the worst mood possible. <sighs> Do you ever just like listen to sad music on purpose to make yourself more sad? That's what I have been doing all day and I'm trash for doing that. So I'm gonna give you guys some new recommendations on sad music and you can be sad with me because I want to fucking die. Today I've been listening to, they're like categorized, all the ones, like a lot of the ones I've been explained, they're all categorized as indie alternative, but I would categorize them as like lo-fi. Yeah, so the first one that a lot of you guys probably already know is Teen Suicide, or their name now is American Pleasure Club. Their album DC Snuff Film and Waste Yourself is one of my all-time, like in my top 10 favorite albums of all time. Teen Suicide is like an emo noise punk type band. They have a lot of weird noises and every single one of their songs and it sounds very homemade and I like it and a lot of their lyrics are very sad, hence emo. I saw them one time. I saw them with Elvis to Presley, which is another great sad band if you want to listen to them. They're just very lo-fi, homemade, sad music. Um, yeah. I would recommend, obviously, the album Waste Yourself off of that one. I like that entire album. I'm so fucking bored. Everything's going to hell. Or we found two dead swans and filled their bodies with flowers, I think is what it's called. So the next band I have on my list is Crywing. Crywing, they make me want to fall into a well. He is a lyrical genius. The music is just so sad and it makes me really upset. My favorite album by him is Tomorrow is Nearly Yesterday and Every Day is Stupid. He's kind of like more folky than the other bands I'm going to talk about, but he is very like nice, calm, very sad and depressing lyrics if you want to be sad, but that's why we're all here to be sad. Off of that album, I really like Waste Notches and Memento Mori. This album's from 2015, so it's fairly new, I guess. He's still around. He's still playing. I wish he would play live, but I haven't seen anything for him anywhere ever, so yeah, I've been listening to Crying for a while. There was like this one time, you know when you go on those YouTube sprees where you're just like finding a lot of random music? Crywink was one of those bands, and I'm glad I found them because they're amazing. The next band I have is Panuki's Pizza. These guys are f***ing geniuses. There's this album called All the Toppings by them. It was their latest one. I'm pretty sure they released it in 2015, but it has 45 songs on it. 45! I'm pretty sure it's like a two hour album. It's on vinyl, and I know I've seen it places, but it's like really expensive, and I don't know why. It's so expensive, I don't know if it's like a rare pressing or a rare vinyl or anything, but... So off of all the toppings, my all-time favorite song by them ever is Naruto-themed Sexting, which is really good. My other favorite one is Aesthetic, more like S. Pathetic. They, again, are like lo-fi. He is very... It's like more acoustic than anything. That was their last album was in 2015. My eyes are like freaking swollen. I watched two really sad movies and I was crying. Today's just such a fucking shitty day. I'm gonna die alone. I'm like 100% positive I'm gonna fucking die alone. And it's just peachy. The next one I have on my list is Flat Sound. I know a lot of you guys probably know Flat Sound. He's very popular in like the music scene that I'm in. A lot of people I know, they know of Flat Sound. He is like, again, acoustic, lo-fi, very sad. My favorite album by them is probably Sleep and it was released in 2012. Obviously I like the song Sleep. I like Consciousness. I like To See You Alive. I like Don't Call Me At All. Oh my God, that song is so sad. Can't handle any of this. And then he either is or he already has been like working on new stuff and it's really good. The next one I have is Salvia Paul. Don't know how I found this guy, but he's like a New Zealand artist. He only has one album and it's called Melancholy. I don't know if it's Melancholy or Melancholy, but that's their only album and it's like extremely popular. And this kid was 15 when he released it and it was in 2013. This whole album is just good. I'll, I'm gonna put like all the links for this stuff in the description because you guys just have to listen to it because it's so sad and it's 
so good. But this stuff is like very homemade sounding, very lo-fi, very sad. It sounds like something you'd listen to on a cassette tape, which I really like that kind of style. Off of this one, I really like I Was All Over Her. I like Dream, Like You Know I Get Old. Ooh. Ooh, this is a good one. So Dandelion Hands. If you guys know of Hotel Books, he's the guy who does, it's like Hobo Johnson where he just talks instead of sings, I guess. It's really good. But Dandelion Hands is like really sad stuff and his voice always sounds like muffled when he's talking with his music or whatever. We got Starry Cat. Starry Cat's really good. Again, only one album, nine songs from 2015. My favorite off of this one is Happiness for sure. Cyberbully Mom Club, they kind of disappeared. I don't know what happened to them, but really good singer. I love her voice. She sounds like Kimia Dawson, but you guys probably don't know who that is. She's like, who she sound like? She sounds like Waxahachie. Okay, next on my list, I have Pill Friends. Again, these guys are like the same type of dealio. They're indie. Homemade, lo-fi, sad, garbage, but it's great. Their album, Blessed Suffering, was my favorite. Off of here, Rituals was my all-time favorite from this album. Prayers was good. Parking Lot Graves. I don't know why I'm doing this. Why do I do this to myself? Why do I purposely like to make myself sad? I... Just like, do I not want to be happy? Do I just like feeling sad? No, I don't. I really don't. Not being able to sleep is trash. That sucks. Angel Olsen is also very good. My favorite song by her is Unfuck the World. You guys might have seen the album cover probably somewhere, but it's Burn Your Fire for No Witness. Um, I like Unfuck the World. I like Forgiven Forgotten. I like Endless Road. She's just very good. Again, she's like that indie acoustic type singer like Waxahachie or who did I say? Cyberbully Mom Club. Coma Cinema is another good one. Coma Cinema is Elvis DePresley's one of his side projects, but it was like with a whole other band instead of just himself because they know he has like another separate side project that's just by himself. But Coma Cinema, they only have one album, I believe. I think they have one album. Dang, 2011, their album Blue Suicide came out. Off of that one, I like Carolina Please Kill Me, Tour All Winter. That whole album is very good. I was supposed to see them, but I missed it, of course, because I don't have any friends that would ever go with me to concerts. I'm lame, and apparently I'm just trash, so let's move away from like the sad stuff. Just kidding, we're not going away from the sad stuff. We're gonna go to like the indie, happier sounding sad stuff. So one of my all-time favorite depressing artists is Connor Oberst and he has this band called Bright Eyes. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. He's very popular. He's the saddest man I know. His album, I'm Wide Awake, It's Morning, is my all-time favorite that has Lua on it. It has Poison Oak. It has First Day of My Life on it. It's just, he has so many good albums. It's just too overwhelming. And if you want a good cry, listen to like all of his albums, like with Bright Eyes. Connor Oberst himself has like all these other things that he does, which is 10 out of 10 as well. A Jug of Wine two vessels. That was like a whole collab type thing that he did with another artist, which was very good. So besides Bright Eyes, as a lot of you guys already know, Boney Bear is like one of my all-time sad boys. I saw him for the first time a couple months ago, and I have never felt like I was going to cry at a concert before, but I actually oh, was this close to crying and played for Emma forever ago in its entirety and like a couple off of 22 a million. I always put on for Emma forever ago. Every single time in high school, School, like after I would get out of a breakup I would always put that album on for some reason and it's just like every time I listen to it I get like this weird deja vu type feeling. I don't know if you guys get that like when you hear a song you can like narrow it down to like a specific point in your life and you're just like oh my god this is when this happened. It's just like weird listening to it but I always remember when I was in high school and I was sad, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna throw on for Emma all the freaking time. Oh man, Blood Bank, that album is so good. I would always play that one too. And I liked how he changed it up with 22 a million because that album was like very, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just so weird and I loved it. And I love all the different types of sounds that he used in the album and it's just, it's gold. Okay, so like the last person I'll talk about is City in Color. Whenever I'm sad, I'll throw on any of his albums. Little Hell, depressing. The Hurry and the Harm, depressing. Bring Me Your Love, depressing. All his albums are so good. Dallas Green is like a musical genius and his voice is just so beautiful. And you can tell, like I saw him live and you could tell that he's been like through some type of pain in his life because you just don't sing like that and have that strong of a voice and like feeling in your music. I don't know what the heck I'm saying. It's like freaking it's 235 now. Let me know some of your guys' favorite types of sad 
artists or songs, make sure to like this video, subscribe if you aren't already. I'll be back next week, I think, because I have a fun video I'm planning, so bye!